Our kids, sure. we're, we're the ones causing the majority of trouble in the world. Um, and I genuinely hope that there is some sort of a significant grand awakening so that um, whether it's uh, an Obama uh, really being able to come forward, but I think more likely it's going to have to happen outside of politics. And hopefully it's what Brian was talking about. Hopefully there is something that's so extraordinary that it just wakes everybody up into a new reality, whether it's disclosure of extraterrestrials or hopefully a positive thing as opposed to a, a tragedy. Um, sure. You know, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I really, uh, you know, you're clearly a very intelligent guy, Max, and you've got a lot of great information. And um, I think it's, uh, it's wonderful that you're out there. And you're an excellent communicator, by the way. I, I teach communication skills, and you have excellent communication skills. You're a very good orator. <laughs> well, 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 I definitely appreciate that. Like I said, I've, um, my, my background, even from an early, early age, was in sales and communication. And, and uh, that, that, that's obviously my passion. I've tried to use that to the best of my ability in getting certain concepts across, whether it be the product, product that I'm offering or the idea that I have. And, um, you know, it's only been these last, like I said, few years that I've actually been able to, um, uh, to wake up a little bit and, and to try to uh, share with the people that I care about first and foremost uh, yeah. the peril that we're in. I, I, th I think that it's a very real, real peril from not just a geopolitical but a spiritual standpoint where yeah. we limit ourselves in so many ways. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I do all that I can to, uh, to, to try to assure that every day. Um, yeah, well... You're doing an excellent yeah. job, and uh, Brian, you haven't had a chance to say much. What do you have to say, buddy? Yeah, Brian, speak up here, man. I'd love to talk with you and kind of hear some feedback with you. It was actually you that kind of got me involved in this whole thing, and I apologize for missing uh, the other day on your show. You had a you had a special piece that I was I think was so great. I just want to applaud you for that. You you went into um, to uh, uh, the naked body scanners at the airport. And I think that's just such an important piece, especially on the geopolitical scale. And I missed the opportunity yeah. to call in uh, during during your time, and so I just wanted to say thank you so much for going into that. I'm sorry I missed it, and uh, just you know, uh, just want to hear from you a little bit. Anyways, what you've been talking about has is really interesting stuff, and I'm still shocked that 40 something percent that still approve of the president has not looked into all the evidence that's that's just, you know, looking at them in the face. And you, sometimes you've got to do research. And, but the problem is they've got everyone so busy with the economy going bad, with two people having to do two to three jobs, they don't have the time to do research. So that's why people have gotten caught up with the whole Obama deception, is that, is that it's just they don't have time to do research. And they've... That's why people are just so brainwashed. They don't have the time. They're working all the time, and and they're just caught up in in the economical mess. When you say the Obama deception, what does that mean to you? What do you feel the Obama deception would be or is? Well, I whenever I heard him, he sounded really wonderful. I was like, I was moved at one point, but then. When I started, because at that moment I was really heavily into file sharing, and when he started going around having RIAA lawyers in the Justice Department, I started thinking, wait a minute, he's putting record corporates into the Justice Department, and he started doing some weird stuff, and then each month I looked at what he was doing. He, he started doing the exact opposite of what he talked about doing, like... Like he was going to limit corporations, and he was going to be there for the people. He was going to stop the Iraq War, and the and yet he's keeping troops in Afghanistan, and even sent more there. And I started yeah. waking up and thought he wasn't the guy that I thought he was. Do you think? Absolutely. Um, I have a question to ask you. Do you think it's that Obama's not the guy we thought he was, or do you think it's more? A case of nobody really thought he was going to get it. The, the powers to be thought that Hillary Clinton was going to be the next president. And when Obama won, that at some point 
a group of people that he didn't even know existed, took him into a room, showed him video of John Kennedy getting his brains blown out, showed a video of Bobby Kennedy getting his brains blown out, showed a video of Martin Luther King getting his brains blown out, and basically said, okay, let us tell you what you're going to do. This is how things really run. Do you think it's possible well, I, that that's what happened? Well, here, here, here's the thing. I think you, you bring up a great point because I think that that, that type of behavior that you're, that, you're, that you're speaking of takes place on a consistent basis in Washington. And I think a great example of that is Dennis Kucinich. You know, you look at a guy who spoke out against the health care program from day one, who exposed it for all that it was, who exposed the fact that it was written by the insurance companies that it would benefit the very insurance companies uh, from which we, we, we sought of freedom. Th these are the, the exact demons that we, that we really wanted to free ourselves from. And, and when you look at the health care program, the majority of the uninformed Americans out there are going, great, we needed health care reform. We needed freedom from the insurance. I mean, this is what they say. Uh, I know because one of my very best friends, a guy who I only recently reconnected with via Facebook um, from high school, uh, you know, 10 or 11 years ago, uh, an, an intelligent guy, okay, uh, we're, we're talking about a guy that runs a banking branch in, in College Station, Texas, okay, who graduated from A&M. Um, this is a guy who, who, who really thinks, you know, we needed freedom from the insurance companies. Uh, they, they were being corrupt, and so I understand that. Um, but when you look at that and you look at what, um, what really took place, Dennis Kucinich was telling us all along, the insurance companies wrote this bill. This whole thing is, is designed to benefit the insurance companies, and it's a horrible idea. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, magically, we all, we all know about the automatic uh, <laughs> Air Force One ride, right? Dennis Kucinich mm -hmm. goes on an Air Force One ride with Barack Obama and comes out a believer. Did, does anybody rem remember this? I didn't know that okay. that happened. I knew, I knew that Kucinich changed his position. But I didn't have the story of how of what happened. It was documented three days uh, prior to the voting that took place that Dennis Kucinich took a ride on Air Force One, documented beforehand. Okay. Uh, everything everything changed. Kucinich was 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 called a traitor. He was exploited. He was he was uh, he was downtrodden. Every, everybody on Alex Jones and and I defended the guy. Uh, on Alex Jones, and God bless Alex Jones for everything that he does. He's a great patriot in the fight that we got going for us. But everybody just just trampled on Dennis Kucinich. Guys, let me be really frank with you. Let me just do that if I can. I, I've got a couple of kids and a beautiful wife, a great house, and things going for me with a company. If somebody threatens to kill my kids and my wife, I'll vote for whatever the hell they want me to vote for. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. And so... So, so I, I think that it's really important that we realize the power these guys have. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You've got to understand there are a couple. There, there, there's a, a deviation. Okay. There's a partition that takes place between the 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 political body that exists, if I can. And here's what we've got. We've got uh, one side of the partition that is a political body. That are that are people who either come into politics looking to do something great, they come in to help the people, they come in to make a difference in the country, probably people like us here on the phone, or there are people who uh, uh, maybe even come to 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 uh, progress their own political career. Those people are all on the same side of the partition, and that's the problem. But on the other side of that divider, the other side of, of the line, you have people who are absolutely not on the same level that we are. You have people who are out to do evil. You have people who are, um, and I don't like using this term because I think that it's, it's kind of a, um, I, I just think it's a prejudicial term, but these Luciferian people, Mm -hmm. who participate in, in, in human sacrifice and pedophilia and all these types of horrible things who are placed there through Skull and Bones Commission, through different secret societies and so forth, if you yeah, will. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and these are the people who are, um, who are incrementally placed into politics to, be a, um, to, 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 to traverse the whole system and get to where they need to be. And they come from well-to-do families. They can fund the whole operation and so forth. 